The first thing you want to do is make up a shield. If you press V to open up your crafting, you can see that you just need some wood logs and a bit of string, which you can loot very easily early game. Then you can craft up your shield and equip it so you've got it on you at all times. At this stage, we're going to try to get the wand as soon as possible, and to do that, we need two bones. So by exploring through areas like this right here, you should find some wolves, and there's one over there, which once you've got the shield are actually not too difficult to kill. So we'll see right here, all we're going to do is run up to him, and we're going to be blocking the whole time, let him hit us, then we hit him back, and then we do this process over and over again. And I actually took some damage there, we want to let him actually hit us, or try to, and then hit him back, and do that a few times, and there we go, he's dead. So I made a bit of a meal of that, <laughs> but to be honest, it's not as difficult as I made it look. And you see here we got the two bones right there. At this stage, when I press V, I can go ahead and craft up the wand down here, because it just requires those two. Two bones. Now, with the wand equipped, let's go and try and find another wolf, and I'll show you how much easier combat becomes once you have the wand. Okay, there's a wolf just down here, so we're going to do a similar sort of process. We're just going to hold down block, but we can actually use this as a ranged weapon to get a few hits on him before he even gets near us. You can see here as we're walking backwards, in fact, we actually managed to kill him entirely before he even got anywhere near us. You'll find this to be true of many of the mobs that you're going to fight early game once you have the wand. You can actually start using them, uh, wand on them, and getting hits on them as they're coming towards you, and that guy there is pretty much gone before he's even got to us. And by just running backwards and then using the wand, you can pretty much kill all your enemies before they even get to have a hit on you. However, if we do get close to one and we just hold down block and I just wait here, he's going to try and hit us. But he can't really do anything. And then we just block and we hit him back and we just repeat that process like that. As soon as he's done hitting, we just hit him back. And you're going to kill a lot of the early game mobs that you face very easily as soon as you have the wand and shield combo, which is why it's so important to get this ASAP in your new world. Another great use of the shield is you can actually parry and then stagger enemies to give yourself more of an advantage against them. So you see right here, if we just hold down block, we will actually block the attack and not take damage. However, if we block as he's about to do the attack, just during the attack, there you can see we stagger him and he gets a bit dazed and we're going to get a few hits before he comes back to being able to attack us again. Let's do that again just there. Okay, he missed, so we missed, but let's just come back around here. Just during the attack, we just want to go ahead and parry him like that. There you go, and when we block like that, it makes fighting them a lot easier, especially when you get against some of the more difficult enemies you're going to face later on in the game. If you have a bow and some arrows on you, and you have them equipped, then there's something quite cool you can do during combat. You'll see if I'm fighting this guy here, I can use my wand, which I'm using right now, but if I hold down Q, it switches immediately to my bow and arrows, and I can actually switch to my ranged weapon and get some hits in like that. Letting go of Q puts me back to the wand once again, so you can actually toggle between them all very quickly and easily and I've found that to be very useful during certain combat situations throughout the game. It's really worth mentioning that pressing escape will not pause the game. You can see the enemies there are still coming towards me. So you definitely don't want to press escape and think, okay, I'll go off and make a coffee now. Or when you come back, you'll probably be dead. The workbench can be made very early game. You see here, all that's required are eight logs and three string. Once you've made it, it obviously gives you a lot more recipes that you can craft up. But the other good thing, you'll notice my wand here on number one is a little bit used. But as soon as I go into the workbench, it says in the top left there, all items repaired and we come back out and everything has now been repaired this doesn't cost you anything at all no materials or anything like that so early game especially you want to use this a lot and making up the workbench is going to be really helpful one great thing about the workbench is it allows you to craft both the glider and the grappling hook the materials for these things are fairly straightforward and you'll get all of them as you play through the game however if you're unsure about how to get the shroud wood all you have to do is chop down trees that are in the shrouded area so these trees right here that are in the shroud these are the ones that if you chop down they will give you the shroud wood if we go to the edge of the cliff and use the glider you can see here that it does have a stamina bar that's going down there on that circle as it turns red if this goes all the way around then it will stop working and you'll fall the rest of the way so you do want to make sure that you don't fall to your death and you have plenty of stamina before setting off incidentally if you do come off the cliff with your glider and die let's say i jump from here start gliding and run out of stamina fall to my death the tombstone actually comes back up to here so it's easy to get which is a very nice feature in the game and I want you guys to be aware of that because you might be thinking, oh, there's no way I can get back down to that. But actually, it's just up here, nice and easy to reach. Now, I'm going to jump off the cliff here down into the uh, enshrouded area, but I've got another tip while I do this, and that is not to activate your glider until you need it. We don't need to use it the whole way down, just use it before you hit the bottom. Doing it that way means you can fall down a lot further without using any stamina at all, and then only start using the stamina once the glider is opened. Exploring the map in enshrouded can be a little bit difficult and overwhelming at first, but there are a couple things you can do to help yourself out. You might know that if you right-click something that is a point of interest, it then becomes a waypoint and at the top of our screen now we have something at the top there that's telling us how far away it is and what direction we have to head in however you can make these any way you want so if i just right click here then i can either create 
create a marker or set a waypoint. So if I set a waypoint just there, then again at the top of the screen, it points me in that direction and shows me where it is. However, if I decide to instead create a marker, I can choose the color and the icon and then create that. And then that will be on my map permanently. So at any point when I open the map, I can then just right click that and it will set it as a waypoint. This is very useful for places you want to return back to. You'll see here that when I am sheltered with warmth and some comfort, I can actually get a rested buff. And the more comfort things that you have, then the higher that can go. So you see right now the minutes of my rested buff are going up and up here in the top left of the screen. And currently for me, this maxes out at 16. And then as I start to walk away, oh, there's a wolf in here with me. Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's actually never happened before. Okay, we took care of him. Uh, so yeah, basically my rested buff now is starting to count down from that 16 minutes. But if we go ahead and go on to our character and go down here to status details, it tells us a bit more about it. As you can see, it basically means we get increased stamina maximum and stamina regeneration for the time that we have this available. I can't tell you how useful this is, especially in the early game. So you do want to make sure that you get your rested buff as high as possible before you set off to do any quests or adventuring. Another thing that will really help with stamina is honey. So you'll see these beehive things uh, throughout the game. Sometimes they're here like this and you can just press E to harvest them and pick up their drops. So you actually get honey and wax from them. If we go into our inventory real quick, we see that the wax here is used for as a building material for different illumination things. But the honey is the one we're really interested in because it does give a plus 15 stamina recharge with a three minute cooldown. That can be very useful, especially early on in the game. Sometimes when you're harvesting the beehives, the bees will actually come out and attack you. So I'm going to keep harvesting different bee nests right now until that happens to show you how that is. Sometimes you'll get bee nests that are a bit higher up in the trees like this. And that's another thing you can use a wand for just to shoot them down. Sometimes they can be a little bit trickier like that one there. But if you spend a bit of time, you can get them. Okay, here is some bees that are coming to attack us. And uh, you can see right here, in fact, let me just let them hit me and I'll show you what damage they actually do if you watch my health bar. You see right there, quite significant. Certainly not something you want to, uh, you know, ignore because it could easily kill you, especially early on into the game. So the one there, you see just a few hits. We can just block and hit them with the one like we do with other uh, enemies in the game. And uh, you can deal with them pretty quickly, but it's just something that you want to be aware of. Now, my time in the Enshrouded right now starts to count down from five minutes, but this can be extended and there's a few different ways you can do this in the game. And it is something you want to prioritize because it's going to really help with your progression. So let's look at how we do that. Potentially the best way to increase the time that you can spend in the Shroud is to uh, upgrade your Flame Altar. So if we go right here into the Flame Altar, open that up, you see here we can actually upgrade it. So if we wanted to do that, all we need is one of these shroud cores. This right here is a shroud core and you'll get them by killing enemies known as wraiths in enshrouded zones. So as you're adventuring through the different enshrouded areas and killing all the different enemies, you should get one of these fairly early into your game. If we go up to commune with the flame right now and go to upgrade the altar and do that with our shroud core, there we go. We've now upgraded the level of that to level two. So once your flame altar is upgraded, you'll see you have some options here. Things like, for example, strength and the flame. Now you see right here that if we upgrade this, uh, or do I basically do this upgrade here, we give it all this stuff. Then we get from five minutes up to six minutes in the shroud. Now, whilst this is a lot of stuff, none of this should be overly difficult for you to get. The only one that's potentially slightly more difficult to get is the spark. However, you can get these by discovering and interacting with flame shrines that you'll find in the flame sanctums. Basically, once you're going through the game and completing quests, you will get sparks as you progress through. And once you do, you'll know what you can do with them, which is to upgrade your time allowed in the enshrouded area. On top of that, you can unlock a couple of skill points. So for example, the inner fires right here, you see this will increase your maximum shroud time by two minutes when you get there. So you could go along one of these progressions here or this one here in order to get to that. There is another one later on in the game as well, which is Relentless Flame, and that adds a further five minutes. So again, you could go along this quest line here if you wanted to rush that, or this one up here. Now, one thing that can be useful in an enshrouded area is to open up your map. And if the map is not centered on you, you can just press C to get it back to where you are. And you'll see here, this is all the misty areas. So if we set a waypoint like that one there, that's where we need to head in order to get out of the enshrouded area as quickly as possible. So if you're running a bit low on time, you might want to quickly do that. Also, if you're about to head into an enshrouded area, you can sort of look at what direction you're going to be heading in and set like a marker or a couple of markers in different areas where you think you might need to quickly get to if you need to make a fast escape. Once you've done a few different quests, you'll get these little areas right here that tell you where the different vaults are for different characters in the game. So here's the carpenter, this one was the alchemist and so on. Now you see, I've already done this one here, which is the hunter. And I recommend you do this one early on into the game. It's not the most difficult quest in the world and it does allow a really awesome progression. If we speak to the hunter here, you see you can make up a backpack. Now the backpack materials are simple, apart from the dried fur is a little bit more involved. So if we speak to the hunter under crafting, 
we can make one of these drying racks, which is just logs and strings. So that's easy enough to do. And that'll look like this when you place it in your world. And once you're in here, you need to add salt and also animal first. We put that in there like that and then browse recipes and tell it to make dried fur, which it's doing right now. You see down here, it does take a few minutes to make these up, but it is worth it because it's a very useful resource once you've made it. As for salt, you need to go here to the Egerton Salt Mines. This is the location on the map you need to head to and make sure you take your pickaxe with you. I'll show you now what the salt actually looks like and how you mine it. So down in the salt mines now, and we have these areas right here. And if we mine them, you'll see we are picking up salt. So it's not immediately obvious. It doesn't exactly tell you, you know, whatever. You could easily miss this, but this is how you get salt if you're coming down here. Please do consider subscribing if you'd like to see more enshrouded content.